Hey, what's going on guys? I'm Silent Core and welcome back to my Red Dead series. Today we're going to be going in depth at the Collector nerf and looking at the exact odds that have been revealed and it turns out this role has actually been nerfed a lot more than we at first thought. Some collectibles have literally been changed from a 100% spawn chance to a 2% spawn chance. So as a quick intro in case you guys have no idea what I'm talking about, basically with the last two major DLCs, Rockstar has tried to nerf the collector role. With the Moonshiners DLC last year they added more spawn locations and more cycles, however those were later mapped and predicted, and with the most recent Naturalist DLC they actually added random RNG which means those locations can no longer be mapped like they were before. Now not every collectible set has been affected by this nerf, flowers, eggs, alcohol and all the tarot card sets are unaffected, they'll still appear in their old spawn locations so you guys can still use the online collector's map to find exactly where all these collectibles will spawn. However, the thing is, is these sets are all the cheaper ones, they're going to be selling for the least amount of money of all the collectible sets. So it's pretty clear here that Rockstar intended to hit the higher valued sets and just stop people being able to make as much money as they used to on the collector roll. So I thought it would be interesting to talk about each different collectible set and the different odds for each one because each set has actually been hit differently with different odds. So first of all let's take a look at the Heirlooms collectible set. Now this is a bit of a weird one because actually only half of them have been randomised and the other half can still be mapped. So you'll see here on the map that certain Heirlooms are marked with the question mark on top and this means that it's going to give you a randomised random RNG. And if we take a look at the loot table here, the odds are actually pretty reasonable for this one and you'll get to see in some of the other collectible sets later that these are actually pretty good odds compared to some of the other sets. So you basically have a 20% chance to get each of these 5 collectibles, so you have a 1 in 5 chance of getting each one of these items. So for example, if you needed to get the Jade Hairpin to complete your Heirloom set, you'd just need to go and find one of those randomised spots and you basically have a 1 in 5 chance of getting it. So it's, it is actually quite probable that you could get a whole Heirloom set by running the map on this one. Next up, let's take a look at the Coin set. Now the Coins was always my favourite set to get in Red Dead Online. It's the highest valued set and there's not a whole lot of them to get, so I would always focus on getting a Coin set every single day and this one has encountered a fairly significant nerf. So although all 15 coin locations can still be marked on the map and you can still see exactly where to collect them, each one is now a random RNG. So there's no way for any fan or data miner to tell you what coin you're going to get from what spot. It's going to be a completely random chance and you're basically just pulling a fruit machine to get a random coin. Now if we take a look at the drop table for these RNG spots, you can basically see you have a 60% chance of getting a common coin, you have a 30% chance of getting an uncommon coin, and a 10% chance of getting a rare coin, so they're broken into three different categories. So if you're going around collecting these coins and you find yourself getting loads of quarters and nickels and pennies, you know that's not just in your head, you know you're actually going to be getting one of those by 60% odds. So you're going to be constantly accumulating these common coins and you're probably going to end up having to keep selling those as individuals to Madame Nazar so you can keep getting your collectibles. It's also important to note here that if you're already maxed in some of these more common collectibles, the game is actually not going to give you anything. So for example, if you already have 10 nickels on your person, which is the maximum amount, and then you dig at one of these coin locations and it tries to give you a nickel, it's not going to assign you a different coin, you're basically just going to get nothing from that collectible spot. And if we take a look at the rare coins, you can see the New York token for example, only has 2% odds to get. So basically before you would have a 100% chance of getting these coins and they've been reduced all the way down to 2% which makes your chances of getting a full set of coins now very very slim. Alright next up are the arrowheads. Now these are quite interesting because all of these locations similar to the coins they have been randomised so they're going to give you a random arrowhead. However depending if it's a shovel spot or a metal detector spot it has different odds. So if it is a shovel spot, one of the ones that are highlighted on the ground that you don't need the, your metal detector out to find, you're going to be getting a 70% chance it's a common arrowhead and a 30% chance it's an uncommon arrowhead. And your odds of it being a rare arrowhead 
are zero. Those spots will not give you any rare arrowheads. So if you've been collecting in Red Dead Online and you find yourself always maxing out on the, the raw, the rough and the chipped arrowheads, it's not something you're going crazy about. It's just because the odds are stacked not in your favour to just only get these common ones. And we can compare these odds to the other spots that require the metal detector to find and as you can see they have different odds and drop tables and it also gives you a chance of getting the rare arrowheads here. So basically the common arrowhead drop table has been reduced by 10% down to 60 and then you have a 30% chance of getting an uncommon and only a 10% chance of getting a rare arrowhead. And as you can see the quartz arrowhead is the new rarest arrowhead in the game with an odds of 3%. Alright, next up let's go over the Lost Jewelry sets. Now these were basically broken down into bracelets, earrings, necklaces and rings. So there's four different jewelry sets that you can collect. And these ones were quite a popular set of collectibles to get before the nerf as you could basically grab all of these Lost Jewelry sets and they all had high resale value back to Madame Nazar. However, all of these Lost Jewelry sets have received quite a significant nerf with the Naturalist update. So now when you hit one of these spots, you're basically going to get a randomised chance of getting any piece of Lost Jewellery from any of the Lost Jewellery sets. So if you hit one of these spots, you have a 25% chance of it being a ring, a 25% chance of it being an earring, a 25% chance of it being a necklace, or a 25% chance of it being a bracelet. And if we take a look at the odds of it being one of these collectibles, you can see some of these have absolutely horrible odds, some of the lowest being 1.88% of it being a Yates diamond ring or a Thornburn turquoise ring, 1.88%. And even some of the more common lost jewellery items, such as the Harland coral ring and the Aubrey onyx ring, I always end up getting loads of those, but those only have 2.5% odds now from these locations. So what Rockstar have done is they've basically combined all of the Lost Jewelry sets and made it a lot harder to complete any of these now with these new randomised odds. Okay, so we've basically covered every single collectible set that was previously in the game that has been changed. Rockstar did also introduce a new collectible set known as Fossils. Now these are currently a PlayStation 4 exclusive. Usually PlayStation 4 get access to content for about a month, sometimes even two months if Rockstar forget before it's added to the other platforms. So I haven't had a chance to test this one on Xbox One yet. Now the fossils are split into four different categories. There's snow fossils, there's dirt and snow fossils, there's mud fossils, and lastly there's coastal fossils. Now I'm not going to go over all of these items and odds just because there's so much of them but I'll probably have them on screen if you guys want to take a quick look at them. You can see some of the worst odds here are some of the rarer fossils that have a chance of 1.65% or 1.7%. You have very low odds of getting some of those more rare ones. If any of you guys want to check out the online collector's map for yourself I'll have that linked down in the description. This map is still better to use than actually buying the collector maps in-game from Madame Nazar. Those are an absolute rip-off, so don't waste your money on those. I do also want to give massive credit here for these odds to the team at Gene Rope and the online collector map. They did an absolutely amazing job of finding these uh, odds out for us. And I think it's quite clear that Rockstar's goal was to basically break this online collector's map and stop allowing people to map the locations and cycles of all the different collectibles and by randomizing and adding RNG into some of the drops, it's basically done exactly as Rockstar intended to. It's kind of broken the map and stopped us from being able to get sets as easily. Now I haven't tested this one myself, but you can imagine with 2% odds on some of the rarer collectibles such as the coins, it might actually now be better worth your time or for profit per hour wise to actually focus on some of the cheaper sets such as the flowers and the alcohol bottles because you get a guaranteed spawn chance for those. You can head around the map and get a set every single day. Whereas with the higher valued sets such as the jewellery and the coins, you have very bad odds at actually completing those sets so you're going to be constantly visiting Madame Nazar to sell those individual collectibles so you're not always maxed out on the more common ones. If you guys did watch this video all the way to the end and found it at all interesting, I'd really appreciate if you could take a second and leave it a like. It really helps support my YouTube channel. And if you are new around here, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on any future breaking Red Dead news. Have a good one guys, stay safe out there, and I'll catch you in the next video.